series dedicated to exploring technology trends that make an impact. I'm Danielle Panici, your host and head of marketing communications at Vertusa. Cloud adoption has steadily increased in the healthcare industry with a huge push towards cognitive technologies and artificial intelligence. Benefits of cloud computing expand beyond cost optimization and includes higher efficiency, greater collaboration, and better health outcomes. In today's episode, we discuss modern cloud strategies and explore best practices in managing healthcare data on the cloud. We have with us experts in IT and data transformation with a focus on cloud computing, specifically in the healthcare and life sciences domain. I am joined by Vinesh Kolpe, Vice President of Core Platforms and Data Strategy at Magellan Health. As VP of Core Platforms for Magellan RX, um, I manage the overall uh, application portfolio, the data platform strategy on the cloud, as well as performance and operations on a platform that supports uh, close to 60 million members, uh, specifically focused on uh, innovative solutions, process improvements, and improving the overall productivity at Magellan. It's great. It's great to have you here. And we also have with us Manu Swami, Senior Vice President of Healthcare and Life Sciences at Vertusa. Hi, Manu. Hey, hey Janelle. Uh, hey, everyone. My name is Manu Swami. I play the role of Head of Solutions and Technology for Healthcare and Life Science segment. I have been in data analytics professional for the last 20 years, and I have been engaged in multiple cloud-driven data transformations the past decade. Looking forward to a discussion today with you, Vinesh, as well. So data on the cloud is starting to make a lot of noise. Manu, to start with, what is your take on the changes in how payers utilize cloud data services and how has the pandemic influenced the adoption of cloud across the healthcare ecosystem? Pandemic, as all of us know, has been probably the biggest impact on technology adoption and innovation since the last world war. The changing nature of healthcare industry demands, demands more collaboration between different healthcare organizations to, to improve the care for patients and members. Telehealth has been around for quite some time. We evaluated it, assessed it, and trashed it, but now it's coming back. As patients can no longer see doctors, it becomes imperative to make it work. All, the, all of this from remote work to telehealth relies on the cloud. And cloud is key to enable that in an econo economical and scalable way. Whether it has been incre increased contact center demands, whether it's uh, about sharing information of what patients want to share with doctors and with peers, it wouldn't be possible without cloud. Absolutely. And, you know, there are surveys that suggest, you know, COVID-19 has become a really powerful catalyst for rapid cloud migration. Um, the cloud adoption is on a steep curve. You know, folks are spending up uh, cloud adoption as they pivot to the new landscape, you know, in this face of an unprecedented disruption, I think folks realize how easy it is to scale organizations on the cloud. And now organizations now have virtual workspaces, right? We are seeing a decline of on-prem across organizations. I think one data point which easy, easily proves this is, you know, you look at AWS, we saw 29% uh, increase in Q2 revenues in 2020, as well as Google, you know, boasted of a 43% rise in their cloud adoption. And this is really because, you know, it's easy to deploy new digital customer experiences in days rather than months. And we can now support analytics that would be uneconomical or simply impossible with traditional, you know, technology platforms. So with, with the cloud, now you can go from one user to a thousand users in minutes. We see that across the virtual workspaces. So the pandemic has really become a, a key catalyst for all of these uh, things to happen. And Vinesh, from a payer's perspective, how do you prioritize workload migration to the cloud and drive business value? Sure. Um, at Magellan, you know, we are really taking a SaaS approach. We are identifying those clinically led projects with clinically led outcomes. I see cloud as an enabling capability and ultimately it is all about demonstrating value to our users. So, at Magellan, we are looking at our existing workloads and migrating our data centers as an example. We are also infusing cloud through our existing change process. We are not building a business case to do cloud, just like you don't build a business case for security. Every migration is unique and we are taking a very strategic approach to our migrations and adopting what Gartner calls as the six R's, right? So the re-hosting, the re-platforming, repurchasing when we can, or the drop and shop. 
the refactoring, so needing to improve services and availability, scalability, etc. Sometimes we are looking at retaining, so you know the hybrid approach with on-prem as well as cloud, and then we are trying to sunset where possible or the retire or the last hour of the Gartner uh, st strategy is something that we are um, really um, leveraging across our cloud journey at Magellan. Uh, Vinesh, I think you have got it right, yes. Uh, and focusing on getting that business value out in a phased manner is a key tenant when you are prioritizing workloads. We are seeing data as one of the leading areas uh, in terms of differentiation, business differentiation and agility for our payer clients when they are prioritizing their move on to cloud. Using cloud native technologies to give you that differentiation, whether it's NLP driven data ingestion or on demand compute required for you to onboard new clients is key part of a different payer strategy. And I think it makes sense how you're moving ahead with the SaaS based approach first and then taking onboarding of new customers in a phased manner on your cloud platform. And I understand that modernizing data platforms can be a long drawn process. So Manu, can you talk through a few strategies to drive the adoption of modern data cloud technology? Sure, uh, as, I was, as I was pointing out, yes, business value is key. Yes. So when we are looking at driving cloud adoption, we should have a clear articulated business phase business plan which is socialized with different parts of the business to drive adoption in the organization. Secondly, the focus on culture and training of the organization in terms of cloud technology is also key to drive adoption across the landscape. We are taking different strategies to drive adoption in our payer clients. It could be a payer or a department-wise approach, or it could be an enterprise-wide approach. It could be a prioritization based on a business function, yes. or it could be a capacity issue which we are trying to solve because of uh, challenges in one part of the business. So we have to find those areas. It could be driven by compliance. It could be driven by a business event. When you find those areas and drive success with one or two programs, and once you do that, what you do is you find that traction in the organization for people to adopt technologies like cloud and start using the data effectively on cloud. I guess, uh, Vinesh, it's the same in your case as well as you have gone forward with the cloud journey. Absolutely, Manu. You know, data is really the largest asset of our organization. You know, I call it the new oil. You know, it is important that we treat it as such, right? It all starts really with a cultural acceptance that data is the most important asset. Um, it starts with embracing the use of real-time analytics and that, you know, we view engagement with data as the norm. This is really a shift in the entire paradigm and organizations now need to plan for that journey. It's really about maturing the data program by addressing not just our technology needs, but also standardizing data and analytic tools and then aligning our data program priorities with the, our overall organizational strategy, right? So our objective, and you mentioned um, you know, capacity, our objective is really to increase that user adoption of analytic tools, you know, and then transition us from a data rich organization, we have a lot of data, to a more of a data driven uh, organization, which promotes self service. So the goals for us are really meant to increase productivity and decrease our turnaround time. It's really about moving from a standalone monolithic data analytic program and converting that something that into something that is integrated into our processes so that people see it as business as usual for us. So Vinesh, what are your results to date on the cloud data platforming journey? Was it easier? Well, it is never easy. Right? Strong data and platforms and analytics really is a digital business imperative. And it all starts with data governance, um, the right strategy, and an emphasis on a data conscious culture. So we have focused on the foundation and I'm really proud of what uh, the team has accomplished. We now have sound data hygiene practices in place, for example. You know, we have made phenomenal progress in integrating data that was once locked in silos. We've implemented very targeted solutions that have demonstrated value to our users. And by doing so, we have built trust because you know when you deliver outcomes it is easier to get that next wave of improve, you know investment our on prem data warehouse for example has now been migrated to a best in class you know and a highly scalable platform in the cloud 
through this migration, we were able to sunset close to 600 workflows and then replace them with a single data framework, which has reduced our operational costs significantly, allowing our teams now to focus more on the build, build aspects of the organization into workloads such as innovative AI and ML solutions, rather than focusing on the operational aspects of data. So that's been a game changer and a sea change for, for, uh, for driving us to that new cloud uh, platform that we are envisioning. Pinesh, I think what you have done with Magellan is truly fantastic. Uh, uh, your ability to take this journey in such a short space of time and make your decision at the right time to adopt cloud. You had a tipping point. You had an option of extending your existing legacy infrastructure or go bold and go on to cloud. You have made the right choice. And choices are not easy always. I totally agree with you. I, I would like to come to one of my old clients, a healthcare analytics company, which we have been working for over a decade now. We started with their big data journey in 2012. And then they faced similar problems. They were having four or five customers and they wanted to move to cloud at that point in time, because they were not able to meet the ad hoc demands which were coming to them. Yes, they want, there were a lot of new payers who wanted to get analytics services from them and in an ad hoc manner. Uh, and they were not able to service from cloud. At that time, cloud maturity was not high, but we still went ahead and did that move on to cloud using QBOL on AWS at that point in time. It costed a bit more, but we, they saw that benefit and their customer base, business customer base grew 20 times that's within 16 months. And recently we moved them on to cloud native stacks. So, so taking that cost of QBOL out as well. But again, there is not any, always a good time to start, but sooner you start on the journey, the sooner you start realizing the benefits. Absolutely. You know, we started our journey in 2015 at Magellan. You know, I think we're very fortunate to start that early because that has accelerated our move to the cloud for some of our larger clients that we have recently won um, and that really has reduced our time to market. So it's it's a, it's not just scalable, it's just you know what's right for the business. And how do you see the cloud enabling cognitive analytics drive business agility in the organization, Manu? So uh, a lot of information sharing in the industry has been driven by HHS through rulings to drive innovation. And reduce the cost and improve the quality of healthcare organizations. There are fire APIs being made available now to share information. What it gives us an, is an opportunity now to drive intelligence and automation in business processes through analytics. We have been leveraging cognitive analytics and business process transformation for multiple healthcare clients for ages now. It used to be a combination of our RPA solutions in the past, but recently we have seen that data-driven cognitive analytics solutions can really move the needle when it comes to intelligent workflows and process automation in organization. We can see that cognitive analytics will help you drive quicker and more meaningful decision-making process and reduce that subjective biases as well. Every patient treatment and associate actions generate tremendous volumes of data. Without cognitive analytics, we won't be able to get to that vision of a learning healthcare systems or value-based care or in that intelligent patient centricity. Absolutely. You know, I think, you know, in my opinion, we are really in the twilight zone. We are dealing with, you know, fee for service, but we are also having to deal with value-based care. So moving away from referring a patient and then having to deal with it to having more complete and accurate information as a part of the eligibility checking, the prior authorizations, and medical necessity, you know, with value, the revenues are going to dip. So I use a very simple example. If you contract for five things and it takes you 10 things to keep a patient healthy, you don't get paid for the other five. So to be able to identify the patients early and move them to stable cohorts and then manage the risk around them can be done now through machine learning and AI. And I think that's the only way to deal with some of the changes we are seeing in healthcare. Um, you know, we are seeing uh, AI being applied to fields like prior authorization, where a decision can now be made by learning algorithms on whether to approve or deny an authorization. In revenue cycle management, for instance, you know, with the uh, whole fraud-based abuse, as well as OCR, for example, in, in, uh, in the rebates workspace, where we are leveraging um, OCR, you know, on our manufacturer invoices and cash posting. These opportunities are really endless, and I think, uh, 
is what's going to drive some of the cost optimizations as well as drive the overall cost of healthcare in America. I totally agree with you, Vinesh. I think saving those minutes and seconds through intelligent use of these technologies in the overall business process has saved, saved millions for healthcare payer organizations and really moved the needle in the next direction. And Vinesh, to help us sum this all up, can you talk about a few steps that payers can take now to accelerate data-driven transformation, especially during uncertainty? Absolutely. You know, so I think healthcare is economically challenged. You know, it is predicted by uh, 2026, one out of every $5 will be spent on healthcare. So one key characteristic of the cloud is that it drives down the economics of IT. And there is no other industry really that stands to benefit from that as healthcare. So look, I'm very optimistic. I do foresee an Amazon, you know, prime EHR on the cloud, for example, where they will be treating it as, as a commodity, you know, interventions, which will nudge you through the journey. For instance, you know, go to this physician or that pharmacy or that hospital. And with this nudging and routing, costing the healthcare system about 20% less. But for now, I really think, you know, payers should be looking at risk bearing entities such as the uh, MA plans for total risk, as well as CMS uh, direct contracting plans for total risk, you know, that are not, not just monetizing the data on the cloud, but their method of monetization is now, you know, where they are beating the expected, right? So my view is that, you know, for payers, the consumer technology will see more nurse facing and physician facing apps, but operated and managed by risk bearing organizations. So when do you come to an appointment? You know, when do I invoke telehealth? You know, when do I dispatch remote monitoring? All these innovations exist, but they have not been packaged in a seamless way. So we will see a lot of this infrastructure built on the cloud around, around the consumer's longitudinal journey. So this to me, you know, is a trillion dollar industry. And that to me also, we will see the investments. So that's where we'll see the investments. Who has the highest level of you know app downloads for example today you know it's cvs so let's imagine a blue button on the app to share you know data with physicians so in terms of adoption you know there are really two areas that i look at you know you know adopting innovation as well as you know a cost optimization um, with with the overall real estate on the cloud and vinish you're right a lot of cost optimization is funding innovation as well for a lot of our healthcare payer clients i think with and enabling that innovation and at scale within enterprise is key to drive this transformation. Whether it's building those machine learning driven pipelines managed by an effective ML ops process and making uh, exposed via APIs, which can be leveraged at any point in the business value chain. That gives you that ability to do that transformations quickly and be ready for these changes. If you look at existing data processes, you see a lot of isolated processes, you see custom data conversion, still a lot of Excel in the in the company. It's a good indication you need to start building a data strategy, leveraging the cloud solutions. And, and so uh, I, I think industry payers who are right now leveraging cloud and getting ready to adopt cloud at enterprise level, and that they will definitely be making a big impact going forward in their journey. I, I see pandemic as an opportunity to drive this digital transformation. For me, data and CX is, this, the, is digital experience. So, and cloud is key to it. Yeah, as they say, you know, the recovery from this pandemic will be digital. So yeah. that's exactly what we're seeing. Yeah. Thank you so much for your time today, Vinesh Manu, and for your insights around modern cloud strategies. We really look forward to having you on our Virtusa Tech Talk series again. Thank you, Daniel. Thanks, Daniel. Thank you, everyone, for viewing this episode. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, check out our Tech Talk series, and visit our website at to learn more.